Welcome to The New Chemist. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Here on The New Chemist, we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as careers, community research, and COVID-19. We're happy you're tuning in. My guest today is an emergency medicine resident at Northwestern University, Tommy. Thanks for joining me this morning. It is good to hear from you. Just briefly, I'll inform my audience about you. Tommy completed his undergraduate career at the Georgia Institute of Technology and graduated summa cum laude with a Bachelor's of Science in Biomedical Engineering. Tommy went to medical school at the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta and graduated in the top 10% of his class. He's now doing an emergency medicine residency at Northwestern University in Chicago, Illinois. His interests include pre-hospital communication, ultrasound, and medical education. Please welcome Tommy. Thank you, Tommy, for joining me today. It is good to see you. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, so um, what has been some of the most beneficial advice you have received? Um, I definitely have, I think the best advice was uh, given to me by, I can't remember, were you with Andrew Warren? Was that was that Yuri when, when we I, Andrew Warren was the other PL with well, who was the other PL was it Rushi yeah it was Rushi okay so the, the year before I I had working with another uh, he was a senior at that time his name's Andrew Warren he's a emergency uh, he's also an emergency medicine resident now over in Florida okay I think his, his biggest advice that, that always stuck to me was just like don't be a douche you know okay like yeah so the, I mean the, I, I don't know I think I took it to heart because there's a lot of I feel like in the medical field you know, there's a lot of personalities. You know, surgeons have big egos. Um, a lot of people, you know, think they're they're you know the best, the best. And, you know, probably are. Um, but you know, just take, take everything with a grain of salt. And you know, if they say something to you, don't don't kind of don't react to it. Just kind of take it take it as it is. Just, you know, that's just who they are. Um, just play it off. I think that kind of goes a long way because I've I've seen a lot of my peers uh, when like someone says something to them and they react negatively okay. that's, then that goes you know that can go really really bad mm. um, and it's and it's not you know it's not their fault because that's normal a reaction to most of the situations that that they were put in um but you know it's it's just how, it's just kind of how life is you know mm-hmm. kind of just have to suck it up sometimes and you know deal with it but life goes on and yeah, it gets life, better. Yeah, it gets better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, you can't take anything like personal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, even though sometimes you feel led to, but you can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, do you have any advice to those wanting to pursue the field you're currently studying in as an emergency medicine resident at yeah. Northwestern? Yeah, I'd say just keep an open mind. Um, there's, you know, medicine is such a broad field. Um, if you know, emergency medicine is something you're truly passionate about, just kind of get your feet wet before making a decision. Because I've seen a lot of people, you know, they're gung ho emergency medicine um, up until their, their third or fourth year of medical school, and then they, when they actually do it, they realize you know, this is not for them. So just you know, keep an open mind and be willing to try everything and do everything because you'll never know what you, what you'll enjoy in life. Okay, yeah, dude, that's good. That's good. So, in terms of your long-standing interest in the field of science, what have those been? Um, I I'm just curious to know what have been your long-standing yeah. interest in the field of science. So, uh, I guess not so much as science, but I, I feel like education has always been okay. something that I've been passionate about. Um, okay. and just pursuing like education. So, you know, when I was an undergraduate, I worked as a TA. 
um, in medical school. I worked as an anatomy TA as well. I'm um, just kind of pursuing the advancement of both medical education for students and learners and as well as patient education. I feel like um, okay. there's, a, there's a large component, uh, you know, kind of one of the reasons why I went to do emergency medicine was, you know, you see all these patients come in, they don't know why they're taking the medicine. They don't know why, like what hypertension is. They don't know what hy like hyperlipidemia is. And nobody's took the time to just sit with them and talk with them. Um, okay. Explain, you know, this is X, Y, Z. This is why you have to take your medicines because of X, Y, Z. And that kind of education component goes a, goes a long way um, in patient care. Yeah, I would say patient education is very important because, you know, even when I volunteered at Winter Cancer Clinic Midtown, Emory, when I was at Georgia Tech, um, one of the things they had booklets and like other resource materials there for patient education because it was mm -hmm. so important for the cancer patients to know what they're going through and why they're going through it. Mm -hmm. So, how do you maintain view of the bigger picture in your career and in your life in general? Yes. Even when you face challenges and circumstances, as you were saying, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to deal with negative comments or criticisms mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. How do yeah. you maintain view of the bigger picture? I mean, a couple of things. So one is just taking every each day, you know, one day at a time and not, you know, if the past is in the past. You can think about it, worry about it, but just it's happened. It's done. Don't don't worry too much about it just because you know you kind of have to keep moving forward uh, if you make mistakes and then kind of in the bigger picture um just appreciating you know why i wanted to do this why you know i, I my passion is for helping people um, okay. just keep remembering that you know, i'm doing it for the patients even though the hours are long the work, mm -hmm. <laughs> work kind of sucks sometimes and the patients most of the time are not grateful and for, okay. for the work that you do just understanding that you know it's you're helping them you're kind of you're giving back to the community and in the long term you're hopefully you're making some a difference wow so yeah that's good so you're like so you're saying the thing that keeps you going the thing that gives you uh or maintains your view of the bigger picture is the idea of making a difference and your passion for the field mm -hmm. yeah that's good that's good so how have you been adaptive and creative in the field of science in what way have you been adaptive or creative, even as a student? Yeah. I know you were you at Georgia Tech, and then you yes. were at Augusta, now you're at Northwestern. So how have you been adaptive or creative? So, especially projects particularly at Georgia Tech, so, you, you know, we're both BME. So we work with, you know, we were kind of work with medical devices. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had some ideas for medical devices that could help uh, better the field of medicine. None mm -hmm. of them really took off, but there's a lot of, uh, similar products on the market right now okay um okay. i had well, we had i remember in uh, 2300 or one of the classes where we, we designed like a it was like an infrared vein mapping device okay um and this was like, what, like six years six seven years ago now um and now in the market there's, there's actually something like that on the market right now oh wow so, <laughs> yeah, kind of dropped the ball on that yeah, it sounds like you should have pursued that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but how have you sought or found, obviously, you've been successful as a student because you're now a resident at Northwestern. So how have you sought or found the right environment for you to thrive scientifically and intellectually? How did you find it? Or how, did, mm -hmm. how are you seeking that environment? Yeah, I think just surrounding yourself with like-minded people, I think it's very important. Okay. Um, just, just because if... The people around you have similar goals and aspirations. Um, I, I would think that that kind of helps you personally kind of build up your own goals. You, you see these other people and you know how amazing they are and how passionate they are about the things that they want to do, and that kind of kind of like uh, invigorates. Diffuses, yeah, invigorates. That's that's, that's a good word. Yeah. Use, uh, invigorates kind of your own passion, and you, feel like, yeah. you know you, you feel like you want to be like these other your peers. And you, you know, you strive to better yourself um, to be like them. Wow, that's good, yeah, dude. Yeah, because I think culture and community does play a large role in your capacity to thrive mm -hmm. and to do well and to achieve success. So, um, given all your responsibilities as an emergency medicine resident and your accomplishments, um, how do you maintain a balanced life? Or how are you striving to maintain a balanced life? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, 
I guess undergraduate was a little bit easier. You felt like you had a lot more free time <laughs> in college. Yeah. Yeah. Medical school was a little bit more of an adjustment just because, you know, you're just, it, they, people kind of related to drinking out of a fire hose. Oh, wow. Um, they kind of just like flood you with information. So that was, it was a bit of a challenge, but, you know, doable. Residency is a little bit different in the fact that, you know, you're an employee, so you're, you're getting paid to work. So you're getting paid to be there 12, 14 hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you're, kind of committed in that sense but just oh, yeah. taking uh, you know whenever you get some time like free like today um i had a day off so just take time for yourself you know do the things that you want to enjoy mm -hmm. stay on top of your own personal hygiene <laughs> I'd yeah. say it's very important make mm -hmm. sure you got clean clothes groceries in the fridge yeah. um, and then just again just keep doing the things that you're passionate about if you know uh if volunteering is something that you want to pursue, like you're passionate about, like don't stop. Just because you're busy doesn't mean you, you don't have the time for it. Um. Wow. Yeah, dude, that's good. Yeah, because um, I think, I think prior, like basically what you're saying is prioritizing and making sure you keep critical things uh, in, in the, at the top of the list um, to ensure that you maintain a balanced life. So, Tommy, uh, I think by any standard or by most standards of measurement, people can say you've been successful as a student. So how have you been so successful? Um, what, what would you attribute to your success? Ooh. Or who would you attribute? <laughs> or what factors have complemented yeah. you being so successful? Uh, I'd say my, maybe my mom. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, okay, uh, that's fair. One, that's fair. one good genetics from my, from my parents. Okay. Uh, to they when I was growing up they kind of pushed me um, to always you know try my best at everything and they you know if I ever failed at something they always kept pushing me pushing me to keep keep trying but not never never in the way that was like harm, like negative to my self esteem um, it was it was always like in a positive way right. um, and then and then kind of like to read or just you know uh, surrounding yourself with you know like minded people I, if you surround yourself with people who want to want to achieve you know be high achievers like that kind of that goes on to you mm -hmm. and then you, you kind of want you want to be like them and you kind of pursue you know work work harder and try to be the best person that you can be okay okay yeah, yeah, yeah dude, that's good so you attribute your upbringing your childhood upbringing and your parents yeah, i'd say uh the nurture versus nature you know nurture is just as probably even more important than nature so yeah that's true that's true Yes. So, in your environment, how have you maintained vision and teamwork? Yeah. So, again, in a, any medical profession, teamwork is essential. Um, you just, there's so many moving parts, so many different people that have to work together, cooperate to, you know, help get the, get the things that need to be done for the patient. Um, and just always, I mean, for me, it's I think just always being positive about everything. Um, you know, if the nurses kind of slowing down and not doing the things you want to do want want to get done for the patient you know not, don't take it out on the nurse I mean, she's probably got a million other things that she's doing kind of put yourself in her perspective um and just kind of be positive about it you know and see if there's anything that she needs help with that you can you can do for her and that kind of goes comes a two-way street and um promoting good teamwork yeah, that's good. That's good. So keep making sure you appreciate people's perspective and understand where they're coming from. So given the pandemic and all that's transparent and transpiring, how have you approached this challenge, this new challenge with the pandemic? How have yeah. you how have you approached it? Yeah, so you know, sure everybody's so we're still learning everything new about COVID. Yeah. Um, it, the the, the data is still continuing to come out about, you know, the complications, the management. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's a never changing process. So we, we don't really know everything yet, but you know, just keeping keeping yourself updated, I think, is probably the best thing for any anybody can do. You know, the CDC has wonderful resources. If you have any questions to look at, um, just you know, being smart. Uh, you know, wear your mask. Social mm -hmm. distance. Yeah. <laughs> kind of doing all the all the obvious things that yeah. people aren't that people aren't doing, and you know, we're seeing. COVID spikes just because you know, this has been going on so long. I think people are getting a little tired right now. Even I'm getting a little tired, but you know, just doing your part and wearing your mask all the time. Yeah, 
That's good. So, um, when you have challenges in your own life, how how do you approach them? How do you maintain uh, a positive outlook? How are you able to overcome those challenges, yeah. especially in the academic realm? Mm-hmm. Just uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Just again, staying positive. You know, if, okay. You know, it's, 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 they say like if you first don't succeed, try, try, try again. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know. I, I can remember, you know, in medical school, if I didn't understand uh, a specific topic like physio, like cardiac physiology, which is still a little bit confusing to me. Mm-hmm. Um, just finding all the different resources, trying to figure out like best way to learn the material. I would watch the YouTube videos, read textbooks, um, listen to like weird things on the internet, <laughs> on weird, these weird web, like obscure websites with like weird mnemonics and stuff like that. Just okay. whatever, whatever would stick to my brain. Um, yeah. So I'd say like just find what works for you, um, and just, like continue to keep doing that. You know, don't fix what ain't broke. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So you mentioned how when you entered medical school, um, it almost was like you were drinking from a fire hose. Yeah. yeah. So and I take it that's not just uh, a medical school thing. I think that's a professional school thing as well, like graduate school as well. So mm-hmm. how how were you able to mitigate that or manage? I missed that because you graduated from medical yeah. school. So how are you able to mitigate that? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this, most you know, most institutions have a, a curriculum okay. which is is easy, you know, adaptable enough for the students to kind of get in little chunk pieces. Um, mm-hmm. But it's more of like the synthesizing uh, is the high, like the higher level order thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say just you know the more experience you have doing the thing. That you're learning about you know if um i have some, some friends who are one he's getting his phd in electrical engineering okay um so just you know the more exposure he you know, just from talking the more exposure he has to his his research the more he gets involved in these things like kind of the, the more he's absorbing the information the better it's retained and the same thing applies to med so like any medical profession you know seeing patients do actually doing things in the clinic um you, sticks better than just reading it in a textbook because you can remember oh that that patient had that weird disease and these are the things that I did for that patient so you know those are the things associated with that disease it's easy to remember that um, page 300 of the textbook it said x y and z okay yeah that, that's very that's true um so um going taking it back a bit um why did you choose BME as a field to major in why did you choose yeah. BME? So I was always in, interested in like medicine, um, um, but I went when I went to Georgia Tech. I was like, you know, I I love like building things and working with my hands. Um, so engineering sounded okay too. So you know, biomedical engineering okay. kind of has both those words in it. Uh, oh, okay. That was, okay. That was kind of how I came to that decision. Um, you know, I really did enjoy the engineering as- aspects. Um, the engineering classes were really helpful kind of insightful for like other things but you know just personally i like talking to people more than sitting in like at a desk all day yeah i agree i agree i like the personal aspects of uh science education and science mm-hmm. um so um uh, given that you chose bme um why did you choose medicine as a field to do your doctoral studies in as opposed to doing a phd in bme yeah um that could have been my fallback <laughs> oh, okay. uh, if I didn't oh, get into medical school. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I just, you know, you growing up, you know, was, you know, you go over to see your doctor, and like they, you feel like there's just like wealth of knowledge and information, and people people trust their physicians with, you know, their lives, and mm-hmm. right, rightfully so. Um, oh. Kind of just that ability to change lives um, and, and make a difference made me want to do kind of pursue medicine more than engineer not not to say that you know engineers probably do way way more than i do right now and changing lives you know like these pacemakers these patients have are crazy mm-hmm. save millions of lives um but in there it's, it's a team of engineers that designed this um, and we just put them in and make sure everything looks okay yeah that's good that's good so yeah, I as we conclude, I I have one more question to ask you. What have been your most effective and impactful ideas to date? 
if you had to think of one idea you had or that's been given to you or you worked along with, what has been one of your most effective and impactful ideas? I feel like, I guess not necessarily an idea, but I feel like my most impactful role was being oh. a PL. I feel like I got to, yeah. I got to change a lot of people's lives. You know, I'm, I'm doing this interview with you right now. Yeah, um, that's true. That's I've true. Got, I've gotten some, some like texts and like Facebook messages from like past uh, freshmen that I've had. Um, some of them are medical school now. Some of them have jobs and just telling me like, you know, they remember me just sitting down and talking to them, kind of just talking about life and, and yeah. I don't know, I feel like that, that's, that, to me, that's been my, the most impactful role that I've been in so far. Yeah, and I would agree with you because I would say I benefited from being under your uh, PL ship or whatever you, mm-hmm. however you, pronounce, however you call it, coin the term for it. Because you know, even when I was a BME student, I was able to come back and get beneficial help or yeah. mm-hmm. feedback, especially for 2210. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember those days. Days, yeah. Uh, yeah. I but, remember those days too. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, man, it was good to have you on. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is The New Chemist, where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I. Have you heard? Have you heard? The newest and best Bahamian resource for test preparation for BJCs and BGCSEs. Check us out on Facebook or at anansibahamas.com. Again, check us out on Facebook or at www.anansibahamas.com. Where Mr. Ferguson is the CEO, there are a lot of resources, especially for Bahamian students. Anansi Learning Technologies. Check us out.